Well, welcome back. President Trump's social media network, Truth Social, launching in the U.K. yesterday, expanding a digital footprint and bringing free speech overseas. Joining me right now for the first U.S. interview since this announcement is Trump Media and Technology Group CEO and former California Congressman Devin Nunes. Devin, it's great to see you in London this morning. It's, it's great to be here. I got Big Ben in the background, so it's great. And it's so easy to do your show, yeah. Maria, from the UK, because I don't have to wake up early like when I'm on the West Coast. It's simple. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. That's good news. How's the expansion going? Tell me about the launch in the UK and why this is important for Truth Social. Well, you know, look, we've been talking about ultimately giving the American people their voice back and ultimately around the globe. So we looked around the globe. And the U.K. makes a lot of sense, it's, you know, not stated in the obvious, but has a, you know, the second largest country in terms of English speakers. And plus, I think if you look at their commitment and their history regarding free speech, it's a natural jumping off point. And you sense with a lot that's happening here in this country, they just, you know, yesterday Boris Johnson gave his final uh, speech before the parliament. And as you look forward, there's a lot of things that people are saying here about stifling free speech. And I think as I've talked to a lot of people who are kind of center to center right uh, here in the UK, uh, look, it just appears like we've all found out in the United States of America that these big tech tyrants have been suppressing uh, conservative thought or people that they disagree with. So this is a it's a it's a right time. A lot of political upheaval here. And we're excited. It's it's going very, very well. And, and of course, one of the main Yuck. things that we have to watch out for is, you know, because we're not uh, relying on any of these big tech companies is when we deploy overseas, we have to do it all in house to make sure it works. And the good news is we've been up testing this for several days here and it's working flawlessly. No, ah, that's terrific. Congrats on that and the expansion. Obviously, uh, important overall for free speech. What what is the importance of being uh, international for for Trump Social? What is what what does this mean uh, for Truth Social? Rather, what does this mean for the bottom line at Truth Social? And tell me what it brings you as a company to ensure that you've got a foothold in in uh, in Europe in the UK. Well, look, you know, the really, this is a company, True Social, that's mission driven, right? We're, we're, we're a company that's created because President Trump and millions of Americans were either booted off entirely or suppressed severely. So this is not just about, you know, the United States. This is about making sure that the internet is wide open for free speech so that people can communicate and not be censored for, the, for their political beliefs. And look, the U.K., I think, Maria, just makes a lot of sense for, for, for those reasons that I mentioned before. OK. All right. Meanwhile, back in the U.S., we've got a Delaware judge uh, handing Twitter a, a victory. Uh, the lawsuit to force Tesla CEO Elon Musk to, to do the deal, the $44 billion takeover, can proceed. Uh, an expedited trial will now take place in October. Devin, your thoughts on now Musk trying to get out of this deal to acquire Twitter? <laughs> Well, look, I think I said on your show from the very beginning that uh, at True Social, we were never too concerned about, about Twitter because it's largely a bot farm and a house of cards. And I think what's happened here is, is Musk jumped into something, uh, clearly uh, not knowing or, or I guess not believing or not listening to those of us who said that it was a house of cards and full of bots and spam accounts. But in general, President Trump and I were very supportive of Elon Musk buying this company because we thought, look, the mission of our company is to open the Internet. What could possibly go wrong? I think the issue here is, is that it appears like Elon Musk paid way too much for it. I mean, $44 billion for a company that makes approximately 4 to $5 billion in total revenue in a year and has never been profitable. And remember, Twitter is not just a company that it's not like some new startup. This company has been around for over a decade. I mean, they've had plenty of time to turn a profit and they haven't. So, you know, look, it appears like, you know, perhaps the contract that the judge read, he, he ruled quickly. So it appears like the contract must be uh, tilted to the Twitter side, because I think it's I think Musk's only hope would be that he gets Twitter into discovery and shows that it is full of spam accounts and bot accounts. Because, look, I think, like I've said for many, many years, you know, Twitter and their executives, I think, have done tremendous damage to free speech in America. And they've done tremendous advantage, especially to conservatives. But more than that, I think the questions that, that myself and many Americans want to know is all of these blue chippers, companies, corporations that are feeding this four to five billion dollars into Twitter. Well, if 
if a third of that advertising or half of that advertising or 85% of that advertising is just being dumped into the, into the ocean um, and, and yeah. wasted, you know, I think all of those companies have some responsibility to bear. Those big marketing uh, uh, campaigns that are, that are well-funded, that are, you know, as you, as you well know, Maria, tend that marketing, those marketing dollars from publicly owned corporations tend to not go to any companies that are center right, including Fox News, that I think you're well aware of. Yeah. But now, because these are publicly owned traded companies, if they are burning up dollars on a company like Twitter that is that is purely political, I think all of these people have a, have, have a lot to, to uh, confess to, and I hope that Elon Musk is able to get them into discovery so some of this evidence can be shown to the American public. Well, look, we saw during 2020 Twitter and other social media sites censor really important news right before the election, like the Hunter Biden story. Uh, that was totally censored on Twitter. They would not allow the New York Post to post any of their breaking news on, on the laptop right. contents. Now this federal investigation into Hunter Biden's business uh, has reached a critical stage, we're told. Officials are weighing possible charges against the president's son. Hunter could face charges related to possible tax violations or foreign lobbying violations, uh, as well as making false statements. Devin, you've looked at this while you were in Congress. Yeah. What do you think? Look, I think this is, if it had not been for this coming public, if it hadn't have been for Miranda Devine and the New York Post and the work and the few people like you, Maria, that covered this topic, I think this would still be languishing somewhere. It would still be buried in the depths of the Department of Justice, uh, which I think right now is probably at, a, at, a, at its lowest point in terms of uh, people, the American people trusting what happens at the Department of Justice, which is a big problem for our country. So, and that's the, look, that's the important part about why it's so important to open the internet back up in a company like True Social. This information has to flow across out to the American people, out and around the globe. Because look, the polling clearly shows that it would have been highly unlikely that Biden would have been able to win the presidency had the Hunter Biden laptop from hell come out in full, like we're seeing now, that clearly shows, I mean, look, this is always subject to a trial, but clearly shows that Biden was lying about what he knew about his son's business dealings. And look, if this was, if this was any Republican, uh, if, and you, you, you pick the family, I'm not yeah. just saying a, a Trump family member, you, it's basically anyone. If it was anyone, the yeah. FBI and the Department of Justice would have strung these people up if they were Republican and conservatives. And that's been the trend of the Department of Justice for the last five years. And it's very, very troubling yeah. that it's taken this long to get this to a point where, and we, we don't even know, we're just talking about yeah. reports, rumors. We don't even know if he's yeah. going to be prosecuted. Well, we'll see. Or indicted, I mean, there I guess. Uh, yeah. is a, a lot. There, there is a lot to talk about when you look at all of the censorship. Uh, Devin, good luck and thanks very much for joining us from the UK this morning as Truth Social expands globally. We'll be watching. Thanks very much, Devin. All right, Maria. Always a pleasure to be with you.